spot. Meanwhile, the Trojans, John David Booty, know a win here, beat UCLA and hope Oregon loses, and they could go to the Rose Bowl. Big one here. Sun Devils have trailed by double digits five times in the first quarter of the season. Their coach, Dennis Erickson, not happy. I've been telling them for eight weeks, we've got to come out and play better. Obviously, they haven't listened and didn't listen in this one. They're down 7 nothing early, but they come right back. Rudy Burgess takes the kickoff and goodbye. Number 18, David Bueller. The kicker shows some pretty good wheels here, but can't quite get his ankles. Couple of broken tackles, and we're tied at seven. Watch the great block by Anthony Reyes, number 43, right here. We'll blow him up, and then watch him, the blow up block. And that will spring Burgess, who had a good all-around game in this game. As you'll see, he had four catches for 50 yards as well. Second quarter, Arizona State down by just three, not double digits. Rudy Carpenter to Chris McGahey, and there's Burgess. Remember the guy who returned the kickback for a touchdown? Bam! The elimination block. And McGahey takes the ball to the 14, but Arizona State gets just a field goal. It's 17-17. John David Booty, his arm was on fire. Electric in this game. Connects with Ronald Johnson. 33-yard completion. Booty will take it in on the sneak on second and one. And it's 27-17 USC. At the end of the half, third quarter, USC still up 27-17. Oh, Lawrence Jackson hits Rudy Carpenter hard, loses his lid. Oh, man. Sometimes it'll happen playing football. He would lead the game, but later return. The third quarter, USC starting to pull away. Booty, Joe McKnight, end zone. And then late third, yet another booty call. Fred Davis. Power. Four touchdown passes for John David Booty. How about USC in November? Still haven't lost under Pete Carroll from November to May. Mark May, BCSB. And seven, less miles. Going to be on the losing end of this one, and thanks in large part to a large game by Darren McFadden. In second quarter, Arkansas down six, and McFadden lined up under center. Not a surprise, Mark. Not a surprise. They've been using this all season long, but when Darren McFadden takes the handoff like that, the great blocking up front, you're not going to catch him. Touchdown, Arkansas. We go third quarter. Arkansas, seven, six. Casey Dick, he lines up outside his receiver. Another direct snap to McFadden. And he's going to go 73 yards down the left sideline for the touchdown. And look at the big block by the quarterback coach. Oh, uh, just a tremendous effort down there by Casey Dick. He, his main job, the wide receiver, was just to run the corner back off. Well, take a look. We'll see it again here. And the quarterback, Dick, looking back and then laying the block. And what's that mean in the huddle when your quarterback's doing stuff like that, Mark? You get fired up. You're pumped when your quarterback's laying out blocks. Well, LSU going to get fired up. Jacob has to right side touchdown, 14-12. LSU would get the two-point conversion. We're tied at 14s. Next Razorback possession. McFadden again. Hands off to Peyton Hillis up the middle, 65 yards. He's got reservations for six. And all of a sudden, whoo! Pink Suey, it's 21-14. We have an upset in the making up front where this one happened, Mark. The big guys up front got the job done, and you look at right here, look at the blocking in the hole, and it's a downhill run by the fullback right there. Peyton Hillis, he's off to the races. No one's going to catch him. LSU, 33 straight wins versus unranked opponents down 21-14. Next Tiger possession, third and goal. Matt Flynn, Demetrius Bird over the middle, touchdown, and we are tied again. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Tied at 21. LSU a second and third at their own 46. Coach? Notice at the top, the two receivers were both on the line of scrimmage. One of them has to be on, one of them has to be off. Consequently, ineligible man downfield. This is called back. Yep, Hester scores, and they're, they're, they're going crazy. And now they're going nuts because there's your call for the ineligible receiver downfield. Touchdown overturn. Next, Arkansas possession. McFadden pitches to Felix Jones. What a play by offensive coordinator David Lee. Jones, 30 yards down the left sideline. First down at the LSU 35. Same drive. The ball at the 24. McFadden under center. Fakes the run, throws to Hillis, touchdown mark. Oh, Tim Tebow ask, look at this play. Hillis is wide open. Not a great pass, but a great catch and a great finish by Hillis. 28-21 ensuing LSU possession. Fourth and one. And huh, who's the nut? What a call by Coach Miles. Not a bad job. The hat going for it on fourth down. He's been doing it all season long. Crazy. Same drive. It worked. Flynn through the hands of early Doucette. You can't draw that up. Into the hands of Richard Dixon. First and goal at the nine. Mark, this isn't the way this was drawn up, but it worked. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. Right here, it goes through one receiver's hand into the other receiver, but it's great concentration of looking that ball in and bring it down for first down. Fourth and goal, just over a minute left. Matt Flynn, QB draw, touchdown, but wait. 
Coach Nutt has called a timeout right before the play. We've seen this done with field goals. Uh, everyone believes that this thing's going to get changed when the season ends, so they got to play it again, and this time Flynn finds Demetrius Bird. He gets the inside shoulder again. We are tied at 28, and Flynn, uh, Flynn got knocked down, but he takes a lick and it keeps on ticking, and Coach says, let's go to overtime, and in overtime, LSU, Flynn. Quarterback draw, 12 yards, touchdown, and LSU's up 35-28. So Arkansas has got to respond on a fourth and 10, Coach. Fourth down and 10, they have to throw the ball. You got the game, just stop them at the top of the screen. The defensive end comes inside, allows Casey Dick to scramble to the outside. Consequently, he finds Hilly's wide open. LSU that close to perhaps playing for the national title. Same possession, third and goal, Dick to Hillis. Beats Ollie Highsmith right there, who had a huge game, and we are tied at 35. Let's go second overtime and grab a Snickers. We're going to be here for a while. Arkansas gets the ball first. McFadden, a two-play drive. Touchdown, and Arkansas up 42-35. LSU's turn, third and goal. And they go to the man with the low center of gravity when it counts most, but when it counted most at the end, they didn't. We'll get to that momentarily. Lower your shoulder, Jacob, off the left side in for the two-yard score. Tied at 42, third overtime. Arkansas first and goal. Hillis plunges in, and Arkansas is up 48-42. Now, by rule, they've got to go for two. And they are so confident in their offense line. Fisco, they take a pitch to the right. Notice a movement to right tackle. The tight end get in for two. Felix Jones scores it. Darren McFadden not even on the field for that play. Ensuing LSU possession. Flynn to Brandon LaFell, nine-yard touchdown, 50-48. to 48. They've got to go for two. Mark May, the call. Oh, bad call. Run the ball. You're having success running the football. You're physical up front. You go in the blitz situation. Yes, you get the ball off, but a great play by the defender picking the ball off. The interception and the ball game is over. The interception, by the way, Matero Richardson and LSU's national title hopes are crushed at home. 50 to 48, your final in triple overtime. McFadden, last year's Heisman Trophy runner up, 206 yards, 32 carries. LSU gives up 30, 385 yards on the ground. They've given up less than 80 per. Arkansas runs all over them. LSU may go bowling in New Orleans, but not in the BCS title game. Wow. This team's not happy, certainly. We understand it's cost us. We understand it, uh, uh, what, it what it means. But uh, we uh, still look forward to playing another game, a, a very important game, bigger than the one we just played. We're the best team in the country today, and it's offense, defense, and special teams. It's some guys like Darren McFadden, baby. I love you. What, a, what an effort. Y'all better put him in the Heisman. You better put him up there. I'm tired of him being number three wood. number four. We got that wood right here, baby. Somebody better look at this right guy. Here. He's the best football player in the country, and his name's not being mentioned. Lou Holtz, Mark May, number five. You better look at him a little closer. He's a football player. One with the football team in the middle of the sea. Undefeated Hawaii against 10-1 Boise State. First quarter, Boise State up 7-0 after an Ian Johnson 50-yard run. Colt Brennan, Ryan Grice, Mullen corner, tap the toes. Brennan becomes the NCAA all-time leader in touchdown passes with 122. 1917 Hawaii at the half, third quarter. Brennan left side to Vaughn Bess. The move and then and then the, the move there, excessive celebration, not a good move. Brennan and Best, 39 touchdowns together. That ties the NCAA record. Later in the third, Hawaii now down, now up. Jason Rivers, corner. Hawaii, 32-27. Rivers, 12 catches, 123 yards. Best, a school record, 14 catches, 171 yards. And C.J. Hawthorne, five catches, 111 yards. Brennan, three touchdown passes in the third quarter. He had five for the game. The Broncos have won 17 straight whack games and had never lost to Hawaii since joining the conference. Never say never. Hawaii wins the whack outright for the first time ever. Texas and Texas A&M renewing their rivalry in College Station. Native Texan Josh Beckett signed with A&M before going to the pros. Dennis Francione, the story before and after the game. Second quarter, his Aggies up 10-0. Oh, fake field goal. The holder, T.J. Sanders, runs it in for the score. First career touchdown for the backup quarterback and A&M playing loose. How loose? That was Dennis Francione, I think, dropping it like it's hot. We're going to have to get confirmation on that. But in the third quarter, Longhorns down 24-10. They can see their at-large BCS berth slipping away until Quan Cosby. 91-yard kickoff return. Texas down 24-17 after three. Right before the fourth quarter, Francione telling his team, let's go, guys. 
First play, fourth quarter, Stephen McGee, the pride of Burnett High School in Burnett, Texas, hooks up with Mike Goodson. McGee threw for a career-high 362 yards. Aggies win consecutive games over Texas as they roll 38-30. to Hey, didn't you used to be Nebraska? 116 points scored between the Cornhuskers and Colorado on the Buffs range. Ralphie, the four, retiring after the game. Nebraska's Joe Gans to Todd Peterson. 35-24 Nebraska at the half, but Coach Hawkins with the better halftime speech. Gans intercepted by Jimmy Smith. 31-yard touchdown for the young man who says he wants to be an FBI agent. Book that 35-31 ensuing drive. Gans. Looking for somebody in a light-colored uniform. Finds Nate Swift. Not Swift. Intercepted. Lionel Harris. Used to be a bull rider. No bull. First two passes of the second half intercepted. The Gans through Coach Callahan. Is this is he coaching his last game at Nebraska? Cody Hawkins. Coach's son. He rolls out and he finds Scotty McKnight. Colorado with 34 straight points in the second half. And it's Dan Hawkins' club winning 65 to 51. Coach Callahan afterwards. This in Mississippi State. I like it. 103rd edition of this rivalry. Bulldogs trailed 14-0 going into the fourth quarter. They're now down 14-7, less than three minutes to go. Punting to Derek Pegues are the Rebels, and that was a mistake because he goes 75 yards the other way. He said afterwards, the only thing I was thinking, don't get tackled by the punter. No one tackled him. We're tied at 14. Same score, 18 seconds left. Mississippi State's Adam Carlson attempting the go-ahead field goal from 48 yards away. Last season's Egg Bowl, he missed the game-tying field goal from 51 yards away. Coach Kroom had him end every practice in the spring with a 51-yard field goal. Well, that tough love from Sylvester Kroom paid off because Carlson is good from a career-long 48 yards away, and the Bulldogs win 17 to 14. Carlson did all this with a bloody big toe on his kicking foot. You said finishing a deal says a lot about who you are. What about this finish by this football team? I don't think I've ever seen a head coach speechless before. They got so much character. I'm proud of him. Proud of him. Congratulations. And every time I see that, the hair stands up on the back of my neck. I mean, Coach Kroom, uh, <laughs> he deserves a round of applause, he and his staff, because they have reached some milestones this season that haven't been reached since 2000.